What up folks, Alex here, hope you're doing well. In this video, I'm gonna crack open Fusion and I'm gonna show you how I made those transitions which I released to you back in December. Now, it's a much longer video than usual. This is more of a 20 minute Tuesday rather than a five minute Friday. So go put the kettle on or crack yourself open a beer because this one is a little bit longer than usual. But trust me, it's worthwhile because I'm gonna go through all the steps to show you how to make a simple whip pan transition. And once you've got the whip pan nailed, the rest come pretty easily after that. Also, if you did download that transitions pack and you wanna say thank you for it, there's a link down below for my buy me a coffee. You can send me a few quid for the effort. Now, this is also super useful because I'm gonna be releasing another transition pack very soon. And if you want to make some of those yourself, you need to know everything in this video to be able to do the next step to make the next transitions. With that all out of the way, let's open DaVinci Resolve, hop into Fusion and take a look, shall we? So here we are in DaVinci Resolve. Now the first thing you wanna do before you do anything is just make sure to set your timeline frame rate correctly. This should be set to the frame rate that you use or edit in most often. So for me, that's 24 frames per second. Now that's because when you create these transitions, they'll be created at that frame rate and it's not easy to change it. So make sure you get this correct. The first thing we need to do is to add an adjustment clip onto our timeline. So open up your media pool, click on effects, adjustment clips, and just add that onto your timeline. Now we need to make this to be the right length of the transition. I find a second works well, but you can play with it as much as you like. So the easiest way to actually make this a second, I find, drag it to the far left, Move your playhead to the one second mark, which is right there for me. And I can just resize that. And I know that that is exactly one second in length. Now there's a bug in DaVinci Resolve, so there's an additional step. Just grab that adjustment clip, drag it into your media pool, delete it off your timeline, just using backspace, and then add that back onto your timeline. Once that bug is fixed, I will cut this part of the video out. Now, once you've got your adjustment clip set to the right length, just drag it and you want to put it over the point where your two clips meet, so where you want this transition to be. Even though we're only setting these up for now, it's still worth having these two clips on your timeline because then you can see how it all looks. So perfect, like that. Once it's done, give it a click and then head into the Fusion tab. Now, if you've never seen Fusion before or you've never spent too much time in here, it can look a bit confusing, but it's honestly not that bad. We're not actually gonna talk about it too much. I'm not gonna to explain too many things because I want this purely to be a tutorial on creating these transitions, but I'll do a separate video on Fusion itself. So the first thing we need to do is just to make sure that you're seeing the same as I am. We're just gonna make sure we've all got the same amount of things open. So click on effects library in the top left here. So you've got that open. Click on clips. So you've got the clips down the bottom open. Click on nodes so you can see your nodes here. And then from the right hand side, make sure everything's off with the exception of the inspector. Now the first thing you want to do is just make sure that your adjustment clip is selected, like so. And then you can just actually close the clips down. Now underneath your preview here, you've got this little timeline of frames. Because I'm working at 24 frames per second, you can see I've got 24. It looks like I've only got 23, but that's actually because zero is counted as a frame. So zero to 23 is 24 frames. Under there, we've got our little controls here so we can play, and then we've got our nodes. Now nodes are what we're gonna be working with most, and again, looks really confusing, honestly not that bad. Just think of it like a train. You've got the start station here, the station you begin, which is your media in, and then you've got your destination or your end station, this is the media out. This is your little train line, and you just add stations along the way. So we can add effects that get picked up from start, to finish. I don't know if that's usual. That's how I think of it. And it really helps me understand it. So there you go. So we're doing a whip pan. So we need to use a transform node to get going. So open up the effects library. You should already have that open. Click on tools, transform, and then click and hold your mouse on transform and drag it to this line until it changes color and then release like so. If you miss and then it with a transform node that's not connected to anything like so, just give it a click, hold shift, and then you can drop it onto that line. You only need one, so we'll just get rid of that. Now give the transform node a click and we're heading over to the inspector here. Now the inspector is very similar to what you're used to seeing within the edit tab. 
So we've got all these different attributes which we can change. So we've got the center here and we've got the X, which is the X axis. And I can just drag that left and right to move the clip left and right. Nice and simple. The problem is if we move that to the left, you end up with this empty space here. Now in Fusion, you can solve that really quickly. Where you can see edges here, it says canvas, just change canvas to mirror. And what it will do is it will fill that empty space with a mirrored image of the clip itself, which makes doing our width transitions really, really easy. So I'm just going to reset that. I can double click on center to reset it all to default. And we're going to use keyframes to animate this so it gets whipped into the left hand side. So to do that, we just need to select the right frames along here and then set some keyframes. So we're going to drag this little red marker here to the far left, or you can just type zero in this box here. I generally just use this because I find it a little bit easier. Zero. In the inspector, click on this little diamond next to center to set a keyframe. And at this point, we're not going to change any settings at all. We're just telling Resolve that at this point in time, i.e. this frame, we want it to be these settings. Then we're going to go to the middle frame. Obviously, half of 24 is 12. If you're using 30 frames, that's 15. If you're using 60, that's 30. So for me, it's 12. So I'll give that a click. And then we need to change this setting. So what we want at this point is for our clip to be completely out of the way. So I'm just going to click and hold my mouse in here and I can drag to the left. And we just want it to be completely out of the way, which I can tell you is minus 0.5. Because it was on 0.5, we're doing a minus 1, and we'll result in minus 0.5. Then we're going to move our play head along until 23, which is the last frame. And we're going to do the same thing again. This one is at minus 0.5 at the moment. We want a minus 1 from that, which means we're at minus 1.5. Like so. And now if we hit play, you can see it's just moving it to the left. And it's sort of a real basic whip pan transition. But obviously at the moment, it looks kind of horrible. That's because it's completely linear. So we need to change that up. So let's just stop that. In the top right hand corner here, you can click on spline. So open this box up. So this is where we can actually curve or smooth out those keyframes to make the animation look a lot nicer. So you can see all the different nodes which we've added here. We've only added one, so it's transform. So give that a click and this little graph will appear. You can zoom in and out if you need to, or scroll up and down, and you can see our three keyframes. So we've got our start down the bottom here, our middle one, and our end one. Now at the moment, as you can see, it's a really sharp little corner, and it's completely linear, so we need to smooth that out. So give the top one a click, and then down in the bottom left, you should see this little smooth icon. Give that a click. Do the same for the middle, and the same for the bottom. Now you're free to experiment with this as much as you like, but I've got a little process which works for me 99% of the time, so I usually stick to that. Give the middle one a click now that it's smooth, and you've got this little bar with the two dots. Grab the top one and just drag it to the left until it's completely vertical. So we've got this little line now is completely vertical. Go to the top one. You've got the same little line with a little dot. Keep it a horizontal line and just drag it so it's roughly above the middle one, like so. And then repeat for the bottom one, click, and drag that out. And it'll give you a real nice S curve. So now if we hit play, the animation starts off really slow, whips really fast in the middle, and then slows down again. So that looks much, much nicer. The only thing it's missing is some motion blur. So with the effects library still open, scroll down so you've got open effects, expand that, go to resolve effects blur, and then from here, we want the directional blur. Click, drag, and drop it down here on your little train line after transform. And we've added a directional blur node. Give it a click. Head over to the inspector. Now, there's a few things we need to change. We actually work from the middle, makes life a little bit easier. You've got that angle. So I'm just going to show you this. If I put the blur all the way up, you can see it's running at a 45 degree angle. We're whipping from left to right. That's not what we want. 
So we just need to adjust the angle accordingly. You can either go to 180 or zero, they'll look the same. Now you'll also notice the edges, we've got this blank showing. So to change that, go to border type from black, change that to reflect, and that'll get rid of that. So perfect. We're just gonna reset our blur strength. I can give that a double click. And now we essentially just need to repeat the same process we did for the transform, but this time with the blur. So we're gonna come down to our zero frame. We're gonna add a keyframe. It's set to 0.2 at the moment. I actually want zero blur at the beginning of this animation. So we're gonna drag that to zero. We're gonna find our middle frame, so 12. And at this point, I want it to be quite high. I'm gonna go with about 0.7-ish. Perfect. We're gonna drag to 23, the last one, and we're gonna bring that right down to zero. So now we've got three keyframes. You can actually scroll through the keyframes using this little marker here next to the keyframe. So obviously we're at the very end at the moment, we've just got left, so I'll give it a click, we're at zero, 0.65 in the middle, and naught again at the very beginning. If we hit play on this, that's starting to look much, much better. But again, we can smoothen it out slightly just by using the spline tool. So this purple line or pink line here, this is our transform. We can just give that a click to get rid of it. And then we're just looking at, at our directional blur keyframes. We're just gonna repeat the same process as before. Give that one a click, smooth that out. Smooth that one out. And we'll smooth this one out too. I'm not gonna adjust them because that actually works quite well. And then if we hit play, that's looking pretty good to me. And it's as easy as that to make this real simple whip pan transition. If we head back into the edit tab, if we just hit play, we can see what it looks like properly. And that looks really nice. So now we can give the adjustment clip a click, open up the inspector within the edit tab where you've got name, and I'm just gonna call this whip left. Drag that into my media pool or a power bin, and it's there ready to go. Now that obviously whips to the left. Maybe you wanna have a whip to the right as well. Fortunately, you've done all the hard work. so. We've got the whip pan set up in our media pool. So that's done, we can forget about that. We've got this one on our timeline. So we can give it a click, head back into Fusion. Click on Clips, make sure that you select the adjustment clip. And then we can close that down if we want to. Click on the Transform node. We've still got all of our keyframes, so we can go first one, second one, third one. And all we need to do is repeat the process so everything goes to the right rather than the left. So rather than minusing one every time we want a plus one, so we go from 0.5 to 1.5 to 2.5. Now often it's worth just checking your spline, your curves, because in my example, as you can see, it's gone completely haywire, which will look very strange. So all you need to do, click the middle one, set it back to linear, click the top one, set it back to linear, and then just do what we did originally. So the bottom one's fine. Click the middle one, we'll just straighten that out. Click the top one, make that smooth again, and drag that into the middle. That looks better, and now we have a whip to the right. Head back into the Edit tab. We'll rename this one Whip Right. Drag that into our media pool. Job done. We've got whip left and we've got a whip right. And pretty much all of the transitions I made in my whip or camera movement transitions pack, uh, essentially this method, exactly the same, just a different variant of it. So let's give this one a click. We'll head back into Fusion. We've got our transform. Obviously we're using the X axis. If we did the exact same thing with the Y axis, which I'm gonna show you really quickly, I'm not going to talk you through it too much. I'll just do it nice and fast so you can see how it looks. <laughs> Curve these out. Exactly as we did before, obviously just much, much faster. 
and we've effect, we've used the y axis rather than the x and now it'll whip up now it looks weird because the blur's wrong so if we just go to the directional blur and change the angle to 90 degrees which should be straight up or straight down there you go now we've got an up we can go back to edit whip up smash that over there done do the opposite so again let's go fusion clips adjustment clip transform this time rather than y 0.5 to 1.5 to 2.5 we'd go back down so 0.5 to minus 0.5 to minus 1.5 and that gets a whip down if you do them both at the same time so we've got 1.5 or 1.5 and then 2.5 and 2.5 it will go in a diagonal so if we hit play on this it goes up to the top right so you can see how this is going you can build all of the those transitions just using different numbers on this center here to move it left right up down top angles and that sort of thing now to do rotational ones so spins Again, it's exactly the same thing, but rather than using this center, I'll reset that. We're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to set some keyframes, but we're going to use the angle instead. So again, I'm going to show you this really quickly. You should hopefully get the gist by now. Add a keyframe with zero angle. At 12, the middle, we're just going to set this to be 180. And then at 23, the end point, we're going to set this to be 360. Again, let's just smooth that out so it actually looks decent. Can't talk and multitask when I'm going fast like this. Bear with me. Now let's just play on that. We've got a bit of a spin with a nice little animation, so that's looking all right. Again, the blur looks wrong because it's directional, so we're just going to delete the directional blur. Going to go to the exact same place. This time we're going to grab radial blur, pop that on there. Radial blur, as you can see, is rotational. We'll change the black to reflect so it gets rid of those edges for us. Go to zero. We want none at that point. We want quite a bit in the middle. And then we want none at the end. So if we hit play again now, there's a nice little spin transition for us. Another last tip I'm going to give you in this video, if we go to the transform tool, you can change the pivot point. So the pivot point is where it rotates from. So we're just going to move this over and then up a bit. Let's go over a bit more. Now, if we let that play, it's not going to rotate in the middle. It's going to rotate from this point. So as you can see, it's whipping around from there. So again, there's a bunch more. There's four different transitions for you because you can do one going from this corner we'll go down to the bottom left here like so play that and it's whipping down from the bottom left hand corner reverse the process so rather than 0 180 360 go 0 minus 180 minus 360 and then you've got clockwise rather than anti-clockwise keep building them keep using the same one starting from that point this one can now be called a spin drop it onto your media pool and off you go easy as that and then once you've got these basics down you can start to do more clever stuff which i'll cover in another video congratulations all of you that have made it this far really appreciate you sticking around for the whole thing if you enjoyed the video thumbs up if you've got any comments or feedback as always pop them down below i do try and read every comment and i'll respond to as many as i can and if you're new around here don't forget to subscribe thank you for watching folks keep your eyes peeled for more videos coming very soon Take it easy. I'll see you next time. Bye. Man, 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 man. Right, done. Bye bye.